And hello again, Year 11. Right, to start off with, we have a satellite image of Nottingham. I would like you to see if you can identify as many things as possible that you can perhaps name. Pause this slide, have a think, and then uh, and pause. Three, two, one, pause. OK, you've probably identified things like um, the county ground just there. You might have also noticed the forest ground, football stadium, and Trent Ridge cricket ground. You might have acknowledged that this is the area here of Lady Bay, and we have an area known as the Huck here, um, which is uh, an area that used to, it can still flood. You might have established that this is Collick Country Park, and we have the races and the dogs that happen just here. You might have um, noticed this area here, which is the Long Lake out at home, Pierpont. Looks a bit green on there almost as if it's polluted. And these surrounding lakes here on this side and um, funnily enough here as well would be the wakeboarding lakes. Um, you may have identified this area here as Colic and the Trent Basin area. And around here we've got the retail park, um, uh, Victoria Retail Park, and we've got some industrial units as well. What else have we got? You might have established that Nottingham City Centre is mostly within this area just here. And then you might have gone and, and, and noticed that we've got areas such as Snenton just here. And we obviously head in that direction to get towards Alton. OK, that was just a little bit of a start to get you thinking. Today we are focusing on this area here. I'm just putting some stripes on it now. This area here is the area known as Trent Basin. That's what it looks like if we zoom in. Um, so we have here, uh, just highlight a couple of other things for you. We've got Trent Bridge just there, and we've got Lady Bay Bridge just there. And um, we have, uh, this area here is Lady Bay Retail Park, which you may have been to. That's where you've got shops like The Range um, and Hobbycraft uh, and so on. Okay, now this area just here, is the area of the Trent Basin. And um, it's become very run down. It's a, an industrial area. And um, recently there have been proposals to regenerate the area and improve it. Um, quite a lot of money has been spent. And although there are seven phases to the project, one of the projects has already been completed and the others are underway. You might even know of some people that have moved into the area, into some of the new houses that have been built in this area. So today our lesson is um, uh, an example of an urban regeneration, regeneration project to show, firstly, the reasons why the area needed to be regenerated, and secondly, the main features of the project. So we're going to look at Trent Basin in Nottingham because this is where you're from, um, <clears throat> you've probably been to that area, you probably recognise some of the old industrial units that are there, and you've possibly even been there since the regeneration has been taking place. So it makes sense for us to study it rather than study what's in the textbook. The textbook is all about um, Bristol, and it doesn't make sense in my brain for us to study regeneration in Bristol, which is uh, almost a little bit like learning a foreign language when you don't know anything about Bristol. So to me, it makes sense that we study Nottingham and we look at Trent Basin. Right, there's a quick task on this slide. Why do buildings need to have a use? In other words, why do they need to not be vacant? You might get some clues from this picture. Have a go at that, please, and then unpause when you're ready to continue. OK. So you may have said things like the fact that they look um, ugly and they attract crime, as you can see from the picture, all the windows are smashed in. The buildings fall into disrepair, um, uh, the reputation goes downhill um, and people start to move away from the area, which can lead to a bit of a domino effect. So that's perhaps some of the things that you might have said for that first image. OK, um, this is a map showing the Trent Basin area, which is highlighted in uh, the turquoise, the light blue, bluey turquoise colour that's by the river there. This is the area that we're focusing on. And a couple of things you might want to write down about this area. You need to know that in the past, this was a thriving industrial area. And by the past, I mean, you know, if you think about the centuries, the 1800s into the 1900s, sort of mid 90s, maybe even a little bit beyond, 
into the 1970s, 1980s, this area would have had lots of industrial units. Um, products would have come in, uh, raw materials would have come in on the River Trent and they would have docked and offloaded those raw materials. They would have gone into different industrial uh, factories. They would have been processed, um, stored in warehouses and then transported to different places around the country. And the River Trent here would have been used um, for two reasons. One, for navigation, so the ships coming in and out, and two, um, the water from the Trent would have been used in those industrial processes. So some of the boats, I'm just going to highlight on the map here now, uh, so they would have come down this River Trent like this, as you can see, and then they would have come into this area here, which is like a docking area to offload the product. Um, the previous slide, you may have noticed, had some, um, you can rewind and have a little, little look, had uh, almost looked like some winches out of the windows, and they would have um, uh, lowered cranes down from those platforms, and they would have winched up the raw materials onto the different floors of that building. Um, so that would have been happening in this area. And, and it was it was thriving. You know, money was made in this area. It was it was in use. Um, and when land is in use, that is when it's at its best. So this would have been historically a very, very good area and it would have been thriving economically. However, since um, we have moved a lot of production abroad now and we make products uh, in other countries, um, because it's actually cheaper to do that. It's cheaper for us to import things from other countries than it is for us to make them ourselves. Um, and also a lot of the raw materials that we would have used in the past, we have now exhausted, we've run out. So we, we have no choice, but we need to buy things from abroad. Um, because of that, because we no longer make things here, this area, the Trent Basin area has gone downhill. Those industrial units are not in use anymore. They are vacant and they are empty. So linking back to some of the problems that you've just been writing about that empty vacant buildings um, cause, that is, what, that is what has happened to the Trent Basin area. So um, you might even recognise this picture here. Um, this is one of those old industrial buildings, um, <clears throat> which is actually a listed building. It's part of our history. And this is the incinerator here. This thing here that looks a little bit like a cigarette, that's the um, the incinerator, which is burning a lot of Nottingham's waste. So, I mean, look at that image and, um, and just have a think. Uh, I'd like you, over the next few slides, to look at the images that I'm about to present to you. And I'd, I'd like you to write down the social, economic and environmental challenges for the area. So I suggest you pause this slide, quickly make those three columns, and then um, you'll be ready to move on. So that would have been where the, um, the, the the boats would have come in. This would have been where they docked and these would have been some of the industrial units that they would have been offloading their products into. And you can see from this um, image that a lot of these buildings, very large buildings, are all warehouses or industrial units. And again here we've got some more units that you can see. Um, these roofing areas have obviously blown off in the wind. And these buildings haven't been repaired. You can see the same thing over here, these buildings here. And um, this is the River Trent itself. You can see it's all overgrown. Um, all this shrubbery is overgrown through the concrete. Uh, these would have been where this pipe here would have been where um, products made in this building would have been, or waste would have come down this chute um, and would have been taken elsewhere. Um, previously, I was talking about those winches. Here they are, like you can see them sticking out. They would have dropped cranes down into the river and they would have picked up the products uh, into those buildings. So this is an example of what the docks would have been like. Um, this is what it uh, has looked like very recent, up until recently. Um, so hopefully you're getting an impression of the area, this Trent Basin area. Um, and there, look, impression again. So we've got two choices um, when it comes to redevelopment and building. We can either build on brownfield land, as shown by uh, this photo here, or we can build on greenfield land, as shown by this photo here. So brownfield land is a site that's already been built on, just like Trent Basin. Um, and it's ready for some new development, just like Trent Basin. It's normally associated with urban inner city areas, which Trent Basin is. Greenfield land is uh, sites that have not been built on, so it's fresh countryside, 
um, and often you find this kind of land out on the very edge of the city. These are some of the challenges that you should have written down from that previous activity. If you were really thinking hard and if you were pausing the slides, you should have got down things like socially <clears throat> and from the previous activity, of course, um, the areas get a poor reputation. That can lead to house prices plummeting in the area because people don't want to buy them. And if people don't want to buy the house, then you have to lower the price in order to sell it. So the house price goes down and that's not very good for the people that are trying to sell their properties. Um, people that do move in are obviously people on lower incomes and with that comes lower aspiration. Um, buildings that have fallen into disrepair and have smashed windows and graffiti all over them attract further crime because crime generally attracts more crime. Um, and the areas would have a lack of opportunity because businesses don't want to locate there. Um, and so there's a, a, a huge lack of opportunity, a lack of services, um, a lack of leisure opportunities. So socially, not great. Uh, and the final bullet, bullet point there is it's, it's a waste of a great location. You want to think about this. Trent Basin is right near town. It's very close to Nottingham City Centre um, and it's right on the river, which could be turned into a beautiful spot. So it's, socially, it's a waste. It's leaving it like that as rundown industrial units would be a waste of a great location. Economically, low income households that would have been in the area don't generally generate as much money in an area because if they don't earn as much, they don't tend to spend as much. Um, and also economically, businesses would choose to locate. They wouldn't choose to locate here. They would go and lo locate elsewhere where there's far more people um, and where there's more opportunity and where they can make money. Environmentally, the area is an eyesore um, and you've got lots of wasted riverside potential. The area looks very concrete. You might have got that from the images and there's a lack of green space. So environmentally, not great. Run down um, and pretty ugly. Now, these were the challenges and these challenges become the reasons why generation was needed. So going back to our two objectives today, you needed to you need to know two things. One, um, the reasons why generation is needed in an area and two, the features of the regeneration project. So these bullet points that we've got here are your reasons why regeneration was needed in the Trent Basin. Please make sure you have them written down because they will form your um, your case study example. And I can tell you now, this question is coming up on the March mock. OK, let's move on. So two tasks or a task. I want you to create another two columns and I want you to list the advantages and the disadvantages of building on brownfield land. Now, remember, brownfield land has already been built on before. It's no longer in use and it has lots of rundown, old, disused buildings on it. I want you to write down just the advantages and disadvantages of building on that kind of land. Try and think about the social, economic um, and environmental reasons. When you've done that, I want you to explain why developing on brownfield land would lead to a multiplier effect. Pause this slide and then have a go at that. OK, these are some of the things that you may have written down. Advantages. You're more likely to get planning permission. Local authorities want that land to be brought back into use. Therefore, if you applied for planning permission, they're most likely to say yes, because they want to bring it into use. Whereas in the countryside, um, there'd be all sorts of reasons to not build on it. Um, people don't like building on countryside areas um, because obviously you lose lots of habitats in doing so. And a lot of people complain about losing the um, countryside areas, whereas people like you to build on brownfield sites because they want them turning into something better. Another advantage is cheaper because you don't have to put any road access in. You don't have to put water systems in and drainage in. It's already been done before. So you can actually use the current roads that are already there and the drainage that's already there. A lot of services like electricity already exist as well. So cables and piping is already under the ground. So you haven't got to put it in. That's a huge saving. Um, it also means that the city itself stops growing. It stops expanding outwards, taking over the countryside because we're already in the city. So we're just reusing something that's already there. In front of the Trump Basin, it's very, very close to the CBD, which is excellent. It's literally a 10 minute walk. So um, if they bring the area back into use, 
Uh, people are bound to want to live there and move to the area because they're close to town. Um, it clears up an area that would otherwise just attract crime and continue to go downhill. So loads of advantages. The disadvantages, um, they're going to have to clear or destroy what the land was originally used for. They've got to dismantle all of those ugly buildings and bring them back into use. Or for some of them, if they are listed, that means they're not allowed to dismantle them. So those buildings would actually have to be um, repaired rather than uh, bulldozed. They'd have to actually repair them and fix them and make them structurally sound. And that can be quite expensive. So that's that's a disadvantage. Um, there are a few ex uh, uh, buildings in the Trent Basin area which are not allowed to be knocked down. And if you're wondering why ugly buildings are not allowed to be knocked down, well, it's to do with the fact that they are part of our history. They're part of our culture. Um, this whole area would have been a thriving area at one point, and that made not that that is uh, make it helped make Nottingham's history. Um, and so, because of that, we don't just want to destroy it and knock it down and pretend it never happened. We want to keep it and we want to recognise its worth. So, keeping those old warehouse-style buildings is a way of working with our history rather than destroying it. Um, other disadvantages. There is less space for things like gardens. In other words, they can build new apartments, they can build new houses and new flats, but there will be less space for things like gardens um, because the land obviously has already been built on before. So you're working with the boundaries that you've already got. Um, which is my next point. You don't have much choice on what to build as the boundaries are already there. And last couple, buying land um, can be expensive as it's near the CBD. Although like I said earlier, um, planning permission is very likely and because the area is so run down uh, I imagine that the city council would be selling it off fairly cheaply. This is um, an artist's impression of what they wanted to turn the area into and um, so that's obviously just a drawing it's not a photo same with this these are all artists impressions of what they want to do in the area but I mean look at how great that will be if it happens here's some more plans as well of the different units that they've got um, you might notice some of these <coughs> arrows are pointing to certain things, like, for instance, we've got the Riverside Walkway all along the edge of the river. So that would be nice for people for an evening stroll or at the weekends. We've got a, it says here, linear park connecting the waterfront to the city centre, which is nice. We've got a canal side walkway as well, so they can walk into town along the canal. New footbridges to make it more accessible. We've got... Um, Oh, this, this is just pointing to the area of the new canal basin. Then we have got, um, we've got the Riverside Plaza, where there'll be some uh, shops and offices. We've got leisure and recreation focus in, these, in that area as well. Um, we've got an, uh, an arrow here pointing to a mixed use development around the Trent Basin. So all of this area, by mixed use, that means we'll have um, cheaper homes for people on lower incomes. We'll have um, much more luxurious homes as well for people on higher incomes. That creates a mixed neighbourhood, which is a great thing, because what you don't want to do is create housing that's just cheap, because then you attract a lot of people on low incomes to an area, and then you discover that actually that attracts low aspirations and the areas get run down. We want mixed use because it's more sustainable. You have low income households mixing with high income households, and it creates a much more mixed community, which is much more sustainable. By mixed as well, they also mean that there'll be shopping um, areas in here and offices. So lots and lots of mixed use. It means that the area is thriving all day long. If you think about it, if you create an area that's just residential for people to live in, then when everybody's at work in the day, the area is um, essentially empty. And that can open it up to crime because people can come into the area and they can burgle properties without being spotted. If you create an area that's mixed use and you've got offices and shops there, then they will be in use in the day. And so people can look out for um, bad behaviour, uh, robbery, burglary, etc. during the daytime. So it kind of creates a 24 hour area rather than um, areas that are empty during the day. So mixed use is particularly sustainable. We put in as well new cycle um, and footbridges and um, it looks like they've improved existing employment areas over here so we've got uh, jobs being created here 
um, and they've been through pedestrian connections. What I'd like you to do with this slide, please, is pause it. And I do want you to write down some of these things that they have got planned for the Trent Basin area, because this is all part of the key features. Um, so a couple of things that you must write down is that they are uh, one of their key features is that they are improving access to the public. And by access, I mean we've got pedestrian connections, we've got new bridges, we've got routes along the canal, we've got routes along the river, um, and all of these things are improving the access to this area and to town, which is where most people will end up working. I want you to also make sure that you've got written down that they are creating areas for leisure and recreation around that area known as the Riverside Plaza. I want you to also write down that they have improved existing employment areas. So we'll boost jobs in those areas. And I want you to write down that they have created developments that are mixed use in order to keep life in the area all day long. So offices and shops keep life in the area in the day. And the housing keeps life in the area at night when people are back from work on the weekends. OK, let's move on. Um, again, this is just another artist impression of um, one of the first stages of development. And all of this has now been completed. So you'll see some photos in a moment. But that's what it looked like before. This image here was what it looked like before. Um, you can see all of this area has been um, demolished uh, and bulldozed down, all those old buildings. And look at just here. This here is showing you some of the new housing that has been built. OK, this was what it looked like whilst being built. Uh, incidentally, this building here was one of the listed buildings that they couldn't knock down. But you'll see how they've improved it. There we go. Much better. They've brought it back into use. And all of this here is all brand new housing as well. And obviously, all of this is still being worked on. There's still a, lot, a long way to go. This is them um, building the new buildings, the new housing. And now this is what it looks like today. So huge improvements to the Trent Basin, Trent Basin area. And they've even kept this, uh, this lettering here to keep part of the history of the area. OK, I need you to pause this and have a little bit of a read through. Um, these are some of the things that the, the project includes. So uh, let's have a read through. Nottingham Trent Basin Regeneration Project is a new landmark waterfront district of housing, restaurants, bars, shops and offices. The aim is to create an attractive new mixed use district that's unique, sustainable, fully integrated and fully accessible to the public. These are some of the key features. Again, you might want to bullet point some of these into your notes. They wanted to open up views open up views to the river because they're currently obscured by the industrial premises so you can't actually see the river so they wanted to open up the view so that you could actually see the beauty of the river they wanted to create 350 new homes we have a housing shortage in nottingham so this was going to be a great place to build new homes they wanted them to be mixed use so they wanted family homes they wanted townhouse terraces which are often used by couples studios which are often used by single people and apartments single people or couples so it's trying to trying to try and create mixed use for a variety of different socio-economic backgrounds they wanted to create vibrant and distinctive public areas with public squares which is where you'll get shops and you'll get a sense of community they wanted to create the waterfront walk which connects all of the existing walks and the waterfronts so that people can move between areas uh, walking along the waterfront, which will be a really um, beautiful route. They want to create bars on the waterside, restaurants, shopping areas, which is what retail means, retail outlets, and small startup offices where you'll get maybe some high tech industries. So that's really the overall aim is to create this mixed use, beautiful environment. Here's a little bit of blurb about the area. Trent Basin is a new neighbourhood delivering 350 homes to the Nottingham waterside area. It's a 250 acre regeneration zone just over a mile from Nottingham city centre, bringing jobs in uh, bringing jobs in terms of building it all, inward investment because companies have invested in this, and an enhanced public experience through a new riverside walk by the River Trent. 
Trent Basin is also home to a groundbreaking energy installation. That's another key feature for you to note down, which has attracted international attention, providing the template for future models of community generation. This energy inst installation, I think I've got it written down on the next slide, so we'll move there now, is a, um, or in fact, it might even be on the next slide. I'll come back to it. Uh, these are the key features then, the key facts. There are, in total, six phases of development. Phase one and two is now complete. Phase three and four is happening currently today. So if you go down to the Trump Basin area and you're seeing building work, that's phase three and four. But all of these homes that you can see in this picture are now complete. Um, total spend, 100 million. That's a key feature of this um, development project and 350 homes close to the city centre, so another key feature. 73 homes have been built already, that's phase one and two. They were completed in 2018. I don't know, maybe one or two of you live in them, who knows? And the project was given residential development of the year status. Phase three and four are happening currently, and that's 71 extra homes, and that will be completed this year, so during your time at school. And the final phase, which will deliver the rest of the homes, 126, will be completed in 2023-2024. So we've got another few years to go yet until this whole project is complete. OK, this is what I want to tell you about the energy installation. This um, community has a, a community energy battery. It's the biggest in Europe. Um, it's known as the Tesla community battery, and that's what it's delivering. Um, so all of these homes and all 350 homes will be powered using this sustainable energy. So there's no um, coal being burned, no fossil fuel usage. So it's really good. You can ignore this where it says design team. That's unimportant. It's just it copied on. Um, the whole of this Trump Basin regeneration project has been given the Ryber East Midlands Exemplar Housing Award in 2019. And it's also had the Insider Midlands Residential Property Awards for Sustainable Development, and that was in 2018. So it's won a few awards, This the planning and the building of this Trent Basin Regeneration Project has won a few awards. That shows that it's um, successful, it's well liked, um, and it's because they're doing it in as much a sustainable way as possible. You can see in the photo there how they've just transformed that waterfront area. OK, um, again, you might want to pause this slide and just jot down some of the impacts it's had. So um, all of these companies, Innovate UK, Igloo, Blueprint and the University of Nottingham have worked together with other companies like Siemens, um, AT Kearney and Smart Club to deliver renewable energy. By generating, storing and redistrib redistributing energy on site, Trent Basin creates financial returns for the community to offset energy costs. Um, that, what that's saying is because uh, energy is made in this area, whatever they don't use, they sell to the national grid and the community gets the money. So that's obviously a huge impact. It's a really good benefit. Um, this innovative, community-driven approach has drawn international attention. That's why it's won so many awards, because like I say, they're generating all this electricity, they're selling it, and then they're getting the money for it. Um, and it's provided a template for future models of community generation. In other words, other um, regeneration projects are copying this. OK, the design, the quality of place and people centred design has enabled all of the homes to achieve level three of the home quality mark. In other words, these homes have been given a it's almost like a like a certificate to say that they are really, really high quality. Um, and the the expectation is that people that live in these kind of homes have really good health and they have really good well-being. So all the things that we need in life to make us happy, like a good, uh, a good shelter, um, cheap bills, um, pedestrianised areas, green spaces, leisure and recreation on our doorsteps and jobs nearby. All of those things give you generally good health and good well-being. And these homes in this area meet that um, criteria. They've been given this award. 
community centric future. As development began, our residents were encouraged to take ownership of their community through the establishment of the Trent Basin Community Fund and a residents association. So there are community groups in the area. As the community grew, Igloo, which is the name of a company, engaged with these groups to shape proposals for the remainder of the development. Because what you've got to remember is we've got 76 homes that have been completed. People are living in them now, but the rest of the project hasn't yet been built. So um, these companies are asking the people that have moved into the area what they want, how they want it to look. So it's a community driven project. The fund provides residents with an opportunity to interact with one another so they get to know their neighbours and invest in their new neighbourhood um, and wider community as they see fit, ultimately building stronger connections and relationships. So people have been uh, have come together to um, to talk to these companies, to tell them what they would like to see in the area for the future. So it's given them a good sense of place and identity. So it's had a really, really strong impact. So I want you to take some of those things that I've just said and add them into your notes for impact. Please make sure you have got down these following things. One, that there is a community um, energy supply, which uh, um, works on the biggest battery in Europe, which is the Tesla battery, um, and that any energy that is not used can be sold and the, the community gets the money. That's a big thing. Please make sure that you've got written down that the homes meet the home quality mark, which means that the occupants living in them generally should have a good health and well-being because they've got all the things in their area that they need. Um, and please make sure that you have written down that the community has a residence association where residents get together and share their views and work with the companies um, in order to make sure that they uh, get the best deal going forward while the Trent Basin project continues to build in the area. I want you to make sure that you've got those things written down, please. And then finally, there is a clip on Satchel One. I want you to watch it. Um, it's residents talking about living in the area and their views. As you watch the clip, um, I want you to note down some of their views on their thoughts about where they live. And that's it for today's lesson. Thanks for listening. Cheerio.